Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about warning stealth camping, the do's and don'ts. So the first do is spy out the land, maybe around you in your area, maybe on the way to work on the train. Just keep a lookout for spots. You'll be amazed what type of spots you can find for a stealth camp in your local area. And then check it out, go there, maybe cycle there, walk, whatever, walk around the area, get to know it. Find out what happens there at different times of the day. Check out if there's any youth who hang around there or if there's any potential risks you might not know about and just get familiar with it. Then you can find the best spot and then have a bit of confidence that when you go camping there, you're gonna be safe. Second do is to set up late when it's going dark so that there's less chance of being seen and leave early, maybe just after sunrise, just when it's becoming light. When it's dark, you're more hidden. It's pretty obvious, but you'll stay safe. Nobody's going to find you because nobody's going to be there in the dark if you choose the right place. And if you go there and set up late, you're after the dog walkers and before the dog walkers in the morning. So that's what I do. You can check out my videos. I always set up late and I leave early. The next do is if you're going to cook make sure you cook something that's quiet and doesn't smell. So for example, I use an alcohol stove, which is methylated spirits. It's totally silent, makes no noise. Nobody knows you're there. And then usually if I'm doing a stealthy camp, I will cook, probably just warm up some dehydrated meal or maybe use a military rations, like on some recent camps because they don't really smell as bad and it's easy just boiling food in a bag rather than frying a big lump of steak. One thing dogs love is the smell of meat. So if you can cook something that doesn't smell so much, you are less likely to be spotted. Next do is get the best kit you can and you might want to check out my video the five essentials for stealth camping. I'll put the link in this video. But get the best kit you can. Um, I recommend hammock camping. That's best for stealth. Um, and I recommend you wear colors which blend in with the environment plus for your kit. So use camouflage or dark colors, greens, dark browns, colors that don't you know, create a blot on the landscape. I mean, with stealth, the whole point is to be hidden so you find a spot you know behind trees nobody can see you so you don't want to stand out so get the best kit that has the best colors and that will help you on a stealth camp you also don't want to be so obvious that you're going on a stealth camp recently i had a huge backpack i walked through a housing estate and some local youth they called out hey mate are you going camping i mean really that's not what you want is it you don't want to be sort of suspicious. You don't want to be dressed like an army soldier and everybody know you're going camping. So if you're in an urban stealth camping environment, just dress like pretty sort of darkish colors, but normally so nobody really knows what you're doing. The whole key is to blend in to your environment so you don't stand out as being conspicuous and raise people's suspicions. Most people aren't bothered. They're just getting on with their daily lives. But why draw attention to yourself? That's the whole point of escaping for a few hours where you're undetected for a bit of peace and quiet. When you go on a stealth camp, do look out for hazards. I've been on some recently where it's very uneven ground and you could fall down a hole. Literally, you could, your ankle could disappear down some hidden hole. You could break your leg. So don't take stupid risks. Always keep a lookout on where you're going. Know your area in daylight before you wander around in the dark so that you're not gonna break your leg on anything. If you do get caught, which is very unlikely if you follow these instructions I've given you, say the landowner or security guard asks you to move, just move, just pack up and go. Don't even question it, don't argue. Just move on and find another place some other time. 
And if you're not happy in that environment, you just feel there's something not quite right, just go home. Just leave and go home. Have a plan of what you're going to do if the weather turns bad. But if something happens that you don't expect and you're not comfortable, there's no shame in just going home. It's not who's toughest, who can tough things out. You know, just go back. If you're not enjoying it, just go home. This is about fun at the end of the day. Uh, it's not about trying to prove anything to anybody. Now for some of the don'ts. These are some of the things I recommend you don't do when you go stealth camping. The first one is don't camp in fields where there is livestock. Okay, so it can be tempting. You see that field, even if there's no livestock there, when you are thinking about going in there, you can guarantee the farmer will let out those cows at midnight. It's happened to me before. I had to move very quickly. Don't camp in fields where there are cows. So look out for cow pats and things like that and don't camp there. The best places to camp I find are at the edge of cornfields where there's no livestock, uh, no sheep, no nothing. You don't want livestock coming around your tent at night. You don't want a cow tripping on your guy rope at three in the morning. It would not be funny. So don't go anywhere near cow fields. Another don't is don't camp near geocache sites. And those are those little um, sort of, it's like a treasure hunt that people put these little cylinders, you can find it on the website, you can find out where they are, don't camp near those because you don't want someone coming to find that near your tent. Uh, there's one actually not that far from here but I know where it is so I'm not camped anywhere near that. So that's a good thing to look out for. Another thing, don't use your head torch too much and keep the noise and the light down. So don't have a fire unless you know it's totally safe to do so. Just use a camping stove. If you're going get stealth camping, it's best to go on your own. So you don't really need to sit around a fire on your own. It's no fun sitting around a fire in a woodland on your own, I find. Better just to go, get inside your hammock when it's dark and just read something or listen to an audio book or something like that. Don't give any clues that you're there, including lights or fires. Another don't is, don't worry if you can't sleep because you're out in the outdoors, there's going to be some strange noises, you're doing it for an adventure, you're not doing it to get eight hours sleep. If you get some sleep, that's a bonus. I do sleep now, but I didn't sleep for many, many camps. And don't quit if it's uncomfortable the first time, because it takes a bit of getting used to stealth camping, and you need to get familiar with sleeping in a hammock, and familiar with some of the animal noises, and just the general feeling of being in the outdoors at night. So don't worry if you can't sleep and just take it as part of an adventure. Another one, don't leave anything behind. Don't leave any litter, just don't leave any damage. Just leave it like you found it. We always say leave no trace and that's the thing. I mean, stealth means hidden. So if you're gonna stealth camp, you leave the place absolutely pristine. If you see some rubbish and you can, remove it and take it out with you. So leave it better than when you found it. Another tip would be take a black bin bag with you, take some litter home. Um, if you ever do get disturbed, just get your litter bag out and start picking up litter. Because I guarantee the landowner, if they see you picking up litter, they're gonna be fine, aren't they? Just pretend you're doing a litter pick or something like that. We can make it better for nature and for the wildlife by removing cans. You see so much beer tins and things in different places um, and we can take some home with us. That would be a great help, wouldn't it? So that's it, that's the do's and don'ts of stealth camping, what I've learned so far. There's a lot more to share on this. You know, leave your comments, leave what do you think is important. What wouldn't you do? What would you do? Maybe you can add to the discussion in the comments. I hope it helps you to maybe try a stealth camp or get out into the out outdoors. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Leave comments, like the video if you've liked it. Really appreciate you. Thanks for watching this one. I really enjoy doing these stealth camps. I really enjoy you coming on the journey. It's a great adventure every time. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.